Hi friends, you are welcome once again to the Smartway Lectures on the Science Ambassador series. This is a series of lectures we are running on all the areas in science that is the elective chemistry, the elective biology, the elective physics and the integrated science. We are carefully taking our time to take this subject on topic and on subtopic basis, aiding it with a lot of questions that would enable you to understand this concept, prepare you okay, very well before the exams. We are providing you with a smart way to cover your syllabus on time. Don't, don't complain when you are not able to finish your syllabus. Just because in smart way, by a simple click, you can have all the topics, assess all the questions and everything that you can have. And so, just follow us and continue to watch this video and you would realize that chemistry and physics and biology integrated science will be fun. Today we are going to continue on chemistry on chemical bonding. In our last video, we looked at the concept and types of chemical bonding. Briefly, we said that chemical bond is a force of attraction that exists between the particles of matter. We said that chemical bond is a force of attraction that exists between the particles of matter into brackets atoms molecules and ions of matter now we said that the essence of chemical bonding is to bring stability of atoms is to make atoms stable and so you would realize that when you look on the periodic table when you look on the periodic table you realize that most of the atoms do not have a complete electronic configuration. Most of these atoms do not have a complete electronic configuration. Now, the group 1 metals do not have a complete electronic configuration. The group 2 metals do not have a complete electronic configuration. All up to group 7, they all do not have a complete electronic configuration. The group 1 only have 1 electron on the outermost shell. The group 2 metals have only 2 electrons on the outermost shell. Group 3 have only 3 electrons on the outermost shell. Group 4 only have 4 electrons on the outermost shell. Group 5 only have 5 electrons on the outermost shell. And so you realize that they all do not have a complete outermost electronic configuration. When I say complete outermost electron, electronic configuration, what do I mean? Now, an atom either need two electrons in the in the inner shell to be stable or eight electrons in the second shell and any other shell to be stable and so it means that if an atom do not have an the first shell to be two that means that that atom is not stable if the other shells are not eight electrons fully filled then that atoms are not stable so an atom need to have a two inner shell electronic configuration to be stable or eight outermost electronic configuration to be to be stable and so most of the atoms in a periodic table that we have do not have a complete outermost electronic configuration group one group two group three all have less than what four electrons on the outermost shell group one metals like sodium group two metals like magnesium group three metals like uh, 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 like uh, aluminium do not have a complete outermost, outermost electronic configuration they have one two and three outermost electronic configuration respectively and when you look on the right hand side of the periodic table you also realize that carbon which is in group four do not have eight electrons on outermost shell Nitrogen, which is 5, also do not have 8 electrons on the outermost shell. Oxygen, which is 6, do not also have 8 electrons on the outermost shell. Fluorine, which is also what 7, do not have at, uh, 7 electrons on the outermost shell. And only the group 8 metals only have 8 electrons on the outermost shell. So they don't need to bond. They don't need bonding. Most of these atoms that exist around us do not have a complete electronic configuration. They have an incomplete electronic configuration. And so by trying to complete this outermost electronic configuration, they tend to bond to each other. Now, when we follow, the, we will continue this lecture and we will know how this bonding takes place. They either lose some electrons 
or gain some electron in order to complete this eight outermost electronic configuration or two uh, outermost electronic configuration in their first shell now we said that there are two types of what chemical bonding we said that we have the interatomic bond and we have the intermolecular bond we said that interatomic bond is a bond that exists between the atoms of substances we said that interatomic bond is the bond that exists between the atoms of substances and we said intermolecular bond are bond that exists between the molecules of substances now we took an example like water when you have water in the bowl and you delve deep into the atoms of the water you would realize that it the water is h2o that's the chemical formula for water is h2o so it means that hydrogen and oxygen are connected by an interatomic bond and this bond is a real real bond that is indicated by thick lines and so hydrogen is connected to oxygen by a real bond okay indicated with what a thick line but when you you climb and this bond is interatomic bond and this bond is interatomic bond so bond that exists between the atoms of substances are what we call the interatomic bond and the bond that exists between the separate molecules so you realize that each h2o is connected to another h2o by a bond and that bond is also called intermolecular bond these bonds are not real these bonds are not real bond and so they are indicated by what dotted lines and so there are two types of bond the bond that exists between the atoms of substances and the bond that exists between the molecules of substances we said that the bond that exists between the atoms of substances are stronger mostly stronger than the bond that exists between the molecules of substances when you tear a paper what type of bond are we breaking what are uh, previous videos and you would understand the two types of this bond that we have today we would look at the types of the bond we can have within the interatomic bond and the types of bond that we can also have within the intermolecular bond and we will take this each of these bond and begin to what, look at them carefully now what are the types of bond that we can have within the intermolecular bond what are the type of bond that we can have there are three types of bond that we can have within the interatomic bond there are three types of bond that we can have within the interatomic bond we can have the one metallic bond the ionic bond and the, the covalent bond you can rearrange it as ionic bond covalent bond or metallic bond so there are three types ionic bond covalent bond and metallic bond so there are three types of what bond that we can find under this interatomic bond and there are almost four types of bond that we can see under intermolecular bond and the first one is what van der Waals force of attraction which is also called induced dipole induced dipole now we also have dipole dipole what a force of attraction that is also there and we also have what we call the hydrogen bonding and we also have what we call a retrostatic force of attraction so these bonds also have their separate types and so interatomic bond is three ionic covalent and metallic and intermolecular bond is one van der Waals force of attraction dipole dipole force of attraction the dipole dipole interaction and hydrogen bonding and the last one is what in electrostatic force of attraction now we are going to take the first one on interatomic bond and we are going to look at all the bond that is within this this type we are going to look at the metallic bond we are going to look at the ionic bond and we are going to look at the covalent bond they are all within interatomic bond so we are going to look at them and in each of these areas we'll be looking at the their definition we are looking at we'll be looking at the, the nature and formation of this bond we'll be looking at the units the small small unit occurring at 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 lattice side and we'll also be looking at the intermolecular forces and we'll also be looking at the what examples of them so we are going to take the first type of the interatomic bond that is the ionic bond and we are going to delve deep into them we are going to delve deep into them now i will tell you that this is an interesting type of bond that usually make our soup very 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 sweet and uh, make a lot of things very interesting around us now just look on the periodic table just look on the periodic table right? now you realize that the periodic table is divided to two the left hand side of the periodic table and the right hand side of the periodic table now 
elements that are on the left hand side of the periodic table that is in group one in group two and group three these are the major elements that are in the periodic table the group one metals like the lithium like the sodium like the potassium the group two metals like the magnesium the calcium the group three metals like the uh, like the aluminium these elements are found on the left hand side of the periodic table they are found on the left hand side of the periodic table you would see that when you write the electronic configuration of these elements they have less than four electrons on the outermost shell so the group one metals only have only one electrons on the outermost shell now let's take it for example like lithium the atomic number for lithium is what is three and so the electronic configuration is two and one is two and one and so because the one is on the last shell is on the second shell it is in group one sodium two the same let's look at sodium let's look at sodium you would see that sodium has an atomic number of what 11 and so when you write the electronic configuration you will see that we have the two eight and what and one so sodium is also having one electrons on the last shell now potassium potassium is 19 and so you will see that we have two eight eight and one so you will see that we have two eight eight and one so you realize that all the elements on the group one all have one electrons on atom shell only one electrons on atom shell in the in the video i told you that element that do not have a complete electronic configuration either loses the electron or share the electrons in order to have a complete electronic configuration of either two inner shell or eight outermost shell so the group one do not have a complete electronic configuration on their outermost shell they do not have eight electron um, on their outermost shell the group two two also have two electrons on the outermost shell the group two element also have two electrons on the outermost shell and so what are these example let's write the electronic configuration the element magnesium is in, is in group two so let's write the electronic configuration the atomic number is 12 the atomic number is 12 and so when you write the electronic configuration we are going to get two eight and two so you realize that two is the electron that is on the last shell so two is in the inner shell eight is in the second shell and then the two another two is in the third shell so the two that is on the third shell makes it belong to group two calcium is also the same calcium is also what two eight eight and two two eight eight and two so the first one the first shell is taking two the second shell is taking eight the the third shell is taking eight and the fourth shell is taking two so realize that the group two two element also have two electrons on our thermal shell the group three which is uh, uh, aluminium is also having three electrons on the outermost shell and so each of these groups stand for the outermost word electron number and so you realize that this group element do not have even up to half of the eight that need to, to be stable and so they are found on the what left hand side of the periodic table they are not stable they do not have a complete electronic configuration now the elements on the right hand side also do not have a complete do not have the eight outermost electronic configuration now let's start from uh, from carbon carbon only have four electrons on the outermost shell nitrogen only have five electrons on the outermost shell sulfur have six electrons on the outermost shell fluorine has seven electrons on the outermost shell so they are in group four group five group six and group seven respectively so group four group five group six group seven are elements on the right hand side on the periodic table and they do not have a complete outermost electron configuration of eight carbon atomic number is six and so the electron configuration is two and four four electrons on the last shell the next element in the group four is silicon and its atomic number is 14 so when you write the electronic configuration it is two eight and four so two elements here are in group four and it is carbon and silicon the next element is in group five and so nitrogen is in group five and the electronic the electronic configuration of nitrogen is two and five five electrons on the outer shell the next element is oxygen it has an outermost electronic configuration of 
6 and so we belong to group 6 the electronic configuration of oxygen is 2 and 6 and so because it has 6 as its last electrons on the last shell it is in group 6 now the next group is what is group 7 and fluorine which is there is in group 7 because it has 7 electrons on the last shell this electronic configuration is 2 and 7 so this element in the right hand side of the periodic table do not have a complete what outermost electronic configuration to have a complete outermost electronic configuration you must have eight electrons but these electrons on the right hand side do not have a complete outermost electronic configuration they have four five six and seven respectively which are close to what to eight and so what do they do these elements accept the electrons from the left hand side atoms this element accept electrons from the left hand side atoms in accepting electrons they become negative in accepting electron this element on the right hand side become negative and the element on the left hand side become what positive and so there is what you call an ionic bond that set up to attract these atoms together and so when you say what is ionic bond which also means that what is the nature and formation of ionic bond we are saying that it is the force of attraction or the electrostatic force of attraction that exists between the positively charged atoms on the left hand side and the negatively charged atoms on the right hand side of the periodic table so let's take a practical example of this substance we all know the common salt we put in the in the soup we all know the common salt we put in the soup now this is the common salt this is the salt that will make our soup very sweet it's sodium chloride that is what we put in the soup it's sodium chloride now how is it formed how does the atoms come together to form this substance now this substance do contain two elements one on the left hand side on the periodic table and the other on the right hand side of the periodic table since it's an ionic substance the ionic substance must always have this two groups one on the right hand side and the other must be on the what left hand side on the periodic table and so what happens when you write when you take sodium for for instance sodium have electronic configuration of two eight and one it's a, it, it, it sodium is only having one electrons on the la, last shell and i tell you one electrons on the last shell you are not up to eight you are even up to half so you don't what you don't worry yourself it is not complete sodium is not complete so the group one element are not complete sodium which is in the common sort that we that we know do not have a complete uh, atomous electronic configuration it's only having one electrons on the last shell it's only having only one electrons on the last shell and so what does it do it transfer this electron to the chlorine atom it transfer this electron to the chlorine atoms on the right hand side of the periodic table and so the chlorine atom gladly accept this electron and become eight because originally the chlorine atom has only seven electrons on the outermost shell because it's in group seven and the sodium have only one electron on the outermost shell and so the sodium which is on the left hand side of the periodic table will lose this one electron to the chlorine atom and the chlorine will accept this electron and the chlorine will accept this electron now by accepting the electron because chlorine originally had several electrons on the outermost shell it now become eight by accepting electron it become negative by accepting electron it become negative and the sodium too by losing the electron by losing one of the electron they become what positive and so these positive and negative charges develop what to call an attraction that attraction is called electrostatic because it's created by charges and so it develops what we call an electrostatic force to connect the different atoms together that is the positively charged sodium and there was negatively charged what and um, the chlorine together to form the bond and so when we say ionic bond ionic bond is the electrostatic force of attraction that exists between the positively charged atoms usually from the what from the left hand side and the negatively charged atoms usually from the 
right hand side of the periodic table so the when you say ionic bond ionic bond it is the electrostatic force of attraction between the positively charged atoms and a negatively charged atom they are formed as a result of a complete transfer of electrons remember i said that electrons must completely come from either group one group two group three to the element on the right hand side of the periodic table in that process ionic bond formed between atoms on the left hand side on the periodic table and the atoms on the right hand side of the periodic table there is electrostatic force of attraction that hold these atoms together that are op oppositively charged ions and so that is what we say ionic bond is and so i'll take the last one and then i'll take the last one to further expose the concept again i'm repeating again i'm saying that ionic bond is a is a electrostatic force of attraction that exists between the positively charged ions formed from the left hand side of the periodic table and the negatively charged atoms form on the what right hand side of the periodic table and it, it comes as a result of a complete transfer of electron from the atoms on the left hand side of the periodic table to the atoms on the right hand side of the periodic table once that process is set in once the transfer is set in the atoms do not become a neutral species again they become what charges and so one will lose electron will become positive and the other will gain electron become negative and then uh, electrostatic force of attraction develop between them that electrostatic force of attraction is what now we say it is the ionic bond so ionic bond is the electrostatic force of attraction that exists between the positively charged ion and the negatively charged what ion so that is what we say electrostatic forces another second example we can also take a uh, lithium chloride we can also take lithium chloride the lithium chloride lithium is on the left hand side of the periodic table and it's in group one and so therefore only have one electron on the what on the last shell so the atomic number of lithium is what is three and so the electronic configuration is two and one it's have it's, it's, it's only having only one electron on the last shell remember we said that this one electron is not complete and it's even not even up to what four and so it loses this electron and so when it loses this electron the chlorine which is the, the chlorine which is the second element in the lithium chloride accept this electron and become negative this negative charge then attract the positive charge of the sodium and developing what we call the electrostatic force of attraction that is this electrostatic force of attraction that comes together to hold the lithium chloride ion and then the sodium chloride ion together to form the lithium chloride in the bond Thank you. We will end here and in our next episode, we will look at more examples and the units occurring at the latter side.